Jason Blood Church coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, thumbs up. We are a group of Bible-believing Christians looking for our blessed hope, Titus 2.13, the soon return of Jesus Christ at the rapture of the church. If you're not saved, the most important decision as a sinner is to consider what Jesus did on the cross for you. At 1 Corinthians 15.1-4, through 4, Jesus died on a cross, and that's God himself, God in flesh form, and the Messiah. After walking a perfect life, got up on that cross at Calvary because he loves you, shed his blood. It's what he did on the cross. He shed his blood. And it's your belief with your heart and faith alone that saves you. So it's a heart belief and confess with your mouth to salvation in these times that we live in before the rapture happens because then the salvation changes. I have a video on my front page of the YouTube channel if the rapture has happened on what on what's to come and how to be saved during that period but it but it's a free gift by the blood of jesus christ today join us um over on discord at blood church dash team jesus we also are willing to go over salvation with you there um you can leave a message there and ask for that or you can leave a comment below this video or any other any other videos you could send me a direct message on youtube and you could also visit uh email me at jason at bloodchurch.org going to take a look at Lamentations chapter 4. I don't know why I'm on chapter 1. And if you look at chapter 4, it starts out with the siege of Jerusalem. And I'm not going to go through that siege of Jerusalem. But I'm more interested in going through, uh, starting at verse 18... And just so you know, Lamentations is an interesting book before we get into it. And um, a lot of people debate who it was written by. I believe, obviously, it was written by Jeremiah, although in a different style than some of his other books. And this book has double application all the way through it. And historically, of course, if you it refers to the destruction of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar. But prophetically, or spiritually speaking, it is a perfect picture of the Great Tribulation, like the Book of Job. And so I think many of these events in Lamentation will take place again in the future. And I think this goes well with Revelation chapter 11, 1 through 3, and Zechariah chapter 14, 1 through 2, you know, as well. But we're going to take a look, starting at verse 18 of chapter 4, and it's Israel in the wilderness and the tribulation. They hunt our steps, that we cannot go in our streets. Our end is near, our days are fulfilled, for our end is come. Verse 19, our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of the, of the heaven. They pers- persuade, pursued us excuse me, upon the mountains. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. So I think this is when they, in verse 17, if you look there, as for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help in our watching. We have watched for a nation that could not save us. That's interesting in the end times, and it's why I'm bringing it forward. I think that nation, although not identified here, quite possibly could be the United States of America, who has constantly, through its history at least, allied with, but never never signed a military pact with Israel. It's never truly protected it, and it's often instead... Had been had been trying to force a Palestinian state, like the rest of the United Nations, on Israel. Um, of course, to no avail. Israel wants nothing to do with it. And in the times we live in now, it, the leadership of America is not in the position to defend Israel, not with its not with its political base, and the other problems it has. And, and this could even worsen, um, as we you know as we get in the tribulation, of course. As America, I think, could could fall or, or quite, you know, be ruled by the Antichrist system, especially. Verse 19, our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of, of the heaven. They pursued us on the mountains. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. Verse 20, the breath of our nostrils, the anointed of the Lord, was taken in the pits of whom we said, under his shadow we shall live among the heathen. And um, I 
and so you can see that the um, the anointed of the Lord uh, mentioned in, in verse 20 there and prophetically speaking undoubtedly is, is, con is connected with the man child of Revelation 12 12 5 uh, the context here, verses 19 and 20, along with uh, Lamentations 5, 9, uh, which I can just read here, we get our bread with the peril of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness. Is Israel fleeing to, to Sela Petra in the wilderness during the tribulation to get away from the Antichrist, in my opinion, at Revelation 12, 6 and Revelation... 12, 13 through 14. And the reference here and to the man child in Revelation 12 could be could be one of two things. Either a Jewish remnant that is caught up at the, in a post-tribulation rapture or an individual like like Samuel, not Samuel but like Samuel who leads this, this remnant and um, is captured by the Antichrist then that's similar to what happened to Moses and Elijah when they get killed by the you know the Antichrist in Revelation eleven seven through twelve. Now we know the one forty four will will make it to say La Petra, but it's an interesting look into the persecution of the Jews. Chapter five gets into the persecution of the Jews during the tribulation, and um, this this part we're reading here is definitely Israel in the wilderness in the tribulation. Let's continue here, uh, verse twenty one. Rejoice and be glad, O daughters of Eden. Edom, that dwelt in the land of Uz, the cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken, and shalt make thyself naked. Verse 22, the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away in captivity. He will visit thine iniqui iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. And, um... So this is the last time they'll be in captivity. They'll be carried away because when the Lord returns, I mean, certainly nobody will ever conquer the, the after the you know Israel and God's uh, Jesus's and God's kingdom uh, here on earth, the millennial kingdom reign of Jesus Christ. Anyway, I just thought this was interesting. I was I was taking a look at that. I think it sort of speaks to the, a little bit of the time we're in today, right before the tribulation. But definitely, this is of Israel in the wilderness and the tribulation, the siege of Jerusalem. Back then, when Nebuchadnezzar did it, but as well as as, as future prophecy, and and again goes like, it goes well with Revelation. God bless. Have a great day.